lights up the world. The earth sees and trees.
Hallelujah. We are now just entering into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Fellowship is good. It's good to have fellowship with the saints, but now it is time to enter into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has the Lord been good to you this week? Has the Lord been good to anyone this week here? Hallelujah. 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 He has been mighty, mighty good to me and my family. Praise God. I could testify all morning long of all the things that he has done for me. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Did you bring your sacrifice of praise this morning? Did you bring a sacrifice of praise this morning? When you woke up this morning, what was on your mind this morning? Was it breakfast? Was it that first cup of coffee? Hallelujah. Or was it Sunday morning worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Entering into the presence of our mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a beautiful thing for us in the New Testament to come and worship. But for the children of Israel, it wasn't so exciting. It wasn't so glamorous. It wasn't so musical. It wasn't so inspirational. However, they had to come with a sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord. They had to physically bring a sacrifice of praise to the Lord. And that sacrifice would take on the multitudes of sins that that family has committed during that year. They would take that sacrifice, the high priest would take the sacrifice, and the man of the house... He would physically put not only his hand on the head of that sacrifice, but he would also place his head on top of his head on top of that sacrifice. And he would tell the high priest of all the things that they have done and committed against the law. What the whole family had committed against God that year. And that sacrifice was for that whole family. Our, when we come and we give that sacrifice unto the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, he receives that sacrifice. And it comes up to him as a mighty sweet savor, the Lord says. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Did you bring your sacrifice of praise this morning? This morning, it's a great thing. In the Old Testament, it was a very humbling experience because not only did they have to bring a sacrifice, but it had to be perfect. Huh? It had to be perfect. It was just not just some one that they said, okay, um, this one here looks good today. No, 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 no. It had to be without spot or wrinkle. It had to be without any disease. It couldn't even have a little flea on it. It had to be so perfect. It was inspected by the high priest, and it could have been rejected hallelujah are you glad that we can just come to the lord as we are and we're not rejected man whoo we could be rejected hallelujah i wasn't perfect this week i definitely wasn't perfect this week hallelujah i am not i'm not perfect but god still is going to receive my worship he's going to receive my praise because it entered here it's going to come from here it's going to come from out of the heart are we ready can we stand can we get in can we get in the posture of worship and praise do you know what the posture of worship and praise is it's with your hands up it's i surrender this is the posture it's not with your head down and your hands up it's definitely not like this because you're not going to receive anything. Because we're coming with a sacrifice of praise and we're going to give it unto the Lord with our head held high and our hands raised up to the Lord. Hallelujah. As a sign of surrender. Hallelujah. 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 We're surrendering. We're surrendering unto the Lord. Isn't that 
a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Oh, to surrender and say, Lord, I give up. I give up, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give up of my ways, oh God. Have your way, not my way. Oh, hallelujah. Is that your prayer this morning? Hallelujah. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Lord, let your will be done this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, bless and anoint, oh God, this house this morning. Are you glad for an apostolic church? Are you glad for a local, Holy Ghost filled, baptized in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost filled church? Are you, are you glad for that? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We stand in truth this morning, hallelujah. We can't worship the Lord unless we're in truth, hallelujah. Oh, is it the Lord good? Do you feel the presence of the Lord? Are you ready to worship this morning? We have our sacrifice of praise and we're going to offer it up unto the Lord this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus praise the Lord, church. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the presence of the Lord? Amen. Aren't you thankful for your brothers and sisters here this morning? Aren't you thankful that God gave you a new song to sing? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Come on. Why don't you worship him? Why don't you worship him this morning? Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We sing a new song unto you. Oh 
Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you thankful that he gave us a new song? But not only did he give us a new song to sing, but his faithfulness. It's not just a one-time thing, I guess is what I'm trying to get across. His promises that he gives us. He remembers the covenants that we've made with him. And I'm so thankful. Could we just lift our hands for a moment? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. the God of covenants and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven Amen. you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word.
As Brother Romig was encouraging us this morning to bring our worship and our praise to the Lord, I was thinking how that he was mentioning in the Old Testament how that their sacrifice had to be perfect, right? And then he was equating it to today that we don't have to be perfect when we come to the Lord. We bring our sacrifice of praise. We bring our, our, our worship unto Him, but it's not based upon our perfectness. It's not based upon us. Aren't you so thankful for that? But it's based upon the fact that He is worthy all the time no matter how imperfect I am. He is perfect, and he is holy, and he is worthy. What an encouragement this morning that the man of God was giving us that when we come to the house of God to bring a, a worship, a sincere heart from our heart, worship unto him because he is worthy because he is holy. Amen. The song that we're getting ready to sing, um, if I could just be, um, just talk for a minute. Will you, will you allow me to just for a moment? Amen. Uh, this past week, uh, the Lord, I woke up on Wednesday. I suppose the Lord woke me up, right? If the Lord didn't wake me up, I wouldn't be alive. Um, but this song was reverberating through my soul, through my spirit, um, because I needed it. Amen? Some of the lyrics that I will share with you in just a moment um, were ministering to me, and then all day long, all day, on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, on and off, all day, the Lord would just call me to just a, a time with him. And I wept. <laughs> and I allowed the Lord to speak to me as only he can do. Have you ever had those times with him that uh, no matter what anybody really says to you, it's not helping? Right? No matter how much encouragement your brother or your sister gives you, it's not doing it. <laughs> it's just not happening. And every time they try to say something encouraging, you can think of 10 discouraging things to rebuttal what they just said. But God, God will bring you through. Yes, but, you know, God is faithful. Yes, but... 
I don't know, maybe I'm the only person who's ever been in that mind frame, that, that mind space, right? And if you're not right now, God love you, God bless you, pray for those who are. That's why we're a body and we need each other, amen? So I know somebody was praying. Don't know who it was, but I have a feeling that somebody was praying because the Lord began dealing with me all day. And by the end of the day, I changed my mind, my hope changed. I was no longer hopeless, Sister Leanne. I was hopeful. So these words of these lyrics, um, verse 1 says, Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come. Knowing the battles won. For you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. Not in myself. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Verse 2 says, I know the night won't last. Your word, believe with me, church, your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. And then the part that the Lord just kept reminding me of, the bridge says, I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe. See, before Wednesday, I quit believing. I didn't believe it anymore. I believe. I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. These words ministered to me, and the Lord brought to memory the story of Joseph. And I'm not going to take a long time, but you know the whole story of Joseph. Gave him a dream and then went through 20-something years of what looked like situations taking him further and further and further away from that dream that he had given him when he uh, when Joseph told his family at the beginning of the dream that he had his his family said what you would think your mother and your father and your brother your brethren are going to bow down before you and they got angry at him right years 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 later that's exactly what happened however it wasn't just his mother and his father and his brethren. Come on, somebody, hear me. The promise that God had given him was far more reaching than what they even imagined. It wasn't only his family, but it was Egypt. It was Isra the Israelites. We know that, that um, the Lord saved their entire 70 people, saved them all, and the surrounding areas. That God, I want to remind you, I want to remind myself that when God gives a promise, his, his promises are true. He is faithful. And it's far more than what we can imagine or think. And not only that, just want to remind you where Joseph was when he was called to stand before the Pharaoh to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Sister Carrie, Joseph was in prison. We know that. Two years previous, he had told the baker and the butler the interpretation of their dreams. And he told the butler, don't forget me. Remember me. And the butler forgot him for two more years. In the prison, working for God, whatever his hand found to do, he worked. Two years I don't know what the day was like when Pharaoh said, I need somebody to interpret my dream. I don't know what Joseph was doing. The Bible doesn't tell us.
but I can assume because of his faithfulness, he got up that day like any other day. Nothing had changed. He got up and did whatever he did on any other day. Served the Lord faithfully. Didn't know that at the end of that day, he would no longer be a prisoner. But at the end of that day, he would be second in command of all of Egypt. He had no idea. He got up that day, was faithful, and then the Pharaoh sent word. And they came and got him, cleaned him up, took him before the Pharaoh. And he was sure to give God the glory. And we know that that moment, when at that very moment, the revelation or the, or the fruition of that dream began to happen. All of that character building, all of that faith building, all of that, that molding Joseph and setting things into place was now over. That process, somebody hear me, that process for Joseph was over. And he stepped into the fruition of the dream that God gave him in a moment. When God says, it's time, Brother Romig. When God says it, it will happen. What is our position? Our position is to be like Joseph. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm in a prison. Or, or, or yeah, I, I, I'm the, one of the youngest of the brothers. Yeah, yeah, I'm in a pit. Yeah, I'm a slave. Yeah, I'm in Potiphar's house. And I'm not, this is not the dream that God gave me. Instead of sitting back and waiting for it to happen. Instead of sitting back and saying, God gave me a dream. So when he's ready, it'll happen. Because it never would have happened if Joseph took that stance. Sister Carrie, while he was waiting, he served. While he was waiting, while he was in Potiphar's house, he served. He served who? He served Potiphar. And he served the, the people of the house. He even served Potiphar's wife who later betrayed him. Put him in a prison. What did he do when he found he was in the prison? Well, this isn't the dream. This isn't what God told me. In fact, this seems like this is the furthest thing away from what God said. Nobody's bowing down to a prisoner, a slave prisoner at that. He stayed working, serving the prisoners, serving the prison guards, and God elevated him and put him into a position. So when it was time and the baker and the butler came to that prison, Sister Blossom, he was ready. God had built the character. See, God gave him the dream, the dream 27 years ago, but Joseph wasn't ready for the fruition of the dream yet. Yes, the anointing was there. Yes, the dream was there. But Joseph had to go through a process before he was ready for the fruition of the dream. And all of the time, he served. He, he, he served the Lord. He served people. And when it was time, whoo, when it was time, God did it again. Amen. So I encourage you this morning. Many of us, God has given us dreams. God has given us visions. God has spoken a word to us or through someone else for us. And in that moment of faith, we said, yes! Right. Woo! Right. Praise God! I believe it. Right. But then when the, the road gets weary, maybe you felt betrayed. Maybe you felt like you've been in a pit or in a dungeon somewhere. Maybe those you've loved have walked away and left you standing alone. The promise still remains. What are you going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? What's our posture going to be? Back to what Brother Roming was saying. Is it going to be a posture of worship? Is it going to be a posture of, of I believe God and I'm going to trust you? Or is it going to be a posture of I must have been wrong. I got to give up. This is too, too hard. It's too hard, Sister Edna. 
I could walk away and do something easier. I could get satisfaction somewhere else doing something else. Somebody's being ministered to, maybe not everyone. But I encourage you this morning in Jesus. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to
never failed you yet why don't you lift up your hands right now why don't you praise God because he has never left you he has never forsaken you he has never left your side praise God hallelujah Jesus I have had moments where I have felt like Elijah where I have seen the Shekinah glory of God come down 
and penetrate and do miracles in people's lives. I've seen devils cast out. I've seen people healed. I've seen people delivered. I've seen thousands filled with the Holy Ghost in one service. But I've also had my moments like Elijah where I wanted to hide and I wanted to die and I felt like I was the only one that believed in God. I've had my moments where I felt like Noah and Jeremiah where nobody's listening, nobody's receiving. But I've also had my moments where I felt like the apostles and people hear the word and receive the word and they're baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost and God changes their lives. I have felt, I think I've felt almost every biblical story in the Bible. I've felt like Joseph and betrayed and people have betrayed you and thrown you into the pit and want you to die or they wanted to kill you your own brothers and your own sisters I think we've all had those moments that we have felt that we have felt the experiences of the Israelites and we have felt the experiences of the New Testament church but he never fails us he never leaves us. And I, and I know God's going to do it all over again. I know God's going to do it all over again. Sister Blossom, God's going to do it all over again. Sister Leanne, God's going to do it all over again. You're not a bad person because you feel like Joseph or you feel like Moses or you feel like Jeremiah or you feel like... Elijah and you're just wanting to die right after God used you to do miracles and you're wanting to die you feel alone but you're not alone you're not alone the devil is a liar amen we have a couple testimonies I think we have a tag team testimony brother Anthony and sister Edna uh, my wife shared her testimony and they have a testimony Amen. Hallelujah. It's the pack. Hallelujah. Come on, si Sister Edna and Brother Anthony. Praise the Lord. Tell it, Praise the Lord, all of y'all, all of my brothers and sisters. I just want y'all to know that I think about each and every one of y'all all the time. I'm always talking to Brother Mike. I wonder, I wonder, Brother so and so, I just, all of y'all, y'all come to my heart. But this morning as I'm getting dressed, I thought about Brother Anthony. I think you should start this, should you? Praise God, praise God. Um, well, uh, this morning when we came in around 9 something, you know, 9.30, getting ready for the, getting the music ready and all that stuff, um, Brother Miguel was looking for a bag, and Sister Pat said that she knows where everything is in this church. And I said, oh, really? And then I said, can you give me a piece of chocolate cake? But I was just playing around with her because she said she's know, she knows where everything is. And then she looked at me and she said... It's in the store. And then, um, you know, around, you know, when, when sister came in, um, she looked at me and she said, Brother Anthony, I was thinking about you, you know, and I brought you a piece of chocolate cake. Uh, I wanted to bless you. But you know what's funny is it's not only, you know, I do appreciate the fact that she brought me that piece of cake. But in reality, um, there was something else to that that I, you know, that I know that because... Um, you know, we all go through, you know, tough times as Sister Markham was talking about. And um, this is one of my, you know, moments where I've been going through difficult moments. Um, so when, when she gave me that piece of chocolate cake, it's, it's, it wasn't only that, you know, it wasn't only that, that she gave me that because I said it before she came in. You know, when she gave me that, I actually heard the voice of God there, you know. And that really touched me so much because, you know, I almost cried. <laughs> you know, I almost cried. It's not because I said, God, I want a piece of chocolate cake. It wasn't that, no, all right? No. It wasn't that, but it was way more than that. It was deeper. For me, I understand. For somebody else, it might seem like something, you know, simple or, you know, oh, it was luck or something like that. Well, it wasn't luck because this is the first time they actually give me a piece of cake here at this church, to be honest. But um, it was something way deeper than that, than just a, a gift. It, it, was, it was God speaking to me, and, you know, that really touched my heart very deep, and, um, and I'm very thankful for that. You know, God is always paying attention to us. 
I know, out of nowhere, I'm getting ready. It's like he dropped into my spirit, and I, I happily did it, you know. I didn't know God had this, but God has a sense of humor, wonderful sense of humor. Amen. He knows our desires. Amen. So I now assign anybody that brings me any kind of unhealthy food goes to Anthony. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And do it with love. Hallelujah. So anything I get, brother, I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. You, you can use it. I, I don't need it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, but this, that's what church is about. God caring for each and every one of us in different ways. And he knows what we're all going through. He knows the struggles that we have. And Brother Anthony, God, just like Joseph, he gives you a dream, but we get impatient and we don't understand this doesn't look like the dream where I'm at. But he has the dream, and, and he's going to keep it. But we just got to keep serving him until that dream comes to pass. Amen. Amen. Brother Anthony, help me load some trash yesterday. We, listen, we worked some harvest around here this weekend. Hallelujah. We try to get everything prepared and ready so the word comes and hopefully it, it lands in good soil and it produces. Hallelujah. So we thank Brother Anthony for coming and helping me. Amen. 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 Uh, who's got the announcements? Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I heard out of that testimony all of what Pastor shared and Sister Abigail and I agree that chocolate cake is from God. That's what we hear. It's from God. Hallelujah. It's a blessing. Amen. And I also heard that God decided not to tell Sister Pat <laughs> where it was at. Anyway, aren't you glad that we are a family of God? Amen. It's, it's a blessing to be able to come together and be able to love on each other, laugh together, worship together, and encourage one another. That's a blessing. So we want to remind everyone that our prayer line, 6 a.m. and 8 p.m., is still going on, continuing on, has never stopped. God bless Sister Marcia and her faithfulness in leading us in prayer. We do have a ladies' Bible study on Zoom tonight at 6 o'clock p.m., for you ladies, amen, we love to see you there. Youth hang out on Fridays, every Friday at 7.30. They get together. Please see Brother Miguel or Sister Jordan for all those details. Kids Church is on the fourth Sundays of every month. So you want to make sure that the kids come every Sunday, but they're going to have a Kids Church on Sundays. There's Sunday school every week. Their Sunday school today, after the offering, please send the children to the Sunday school room. Every Thursday, Church on the Street, Brother Roaming, our bass player here, would love to give you more information about that um, ministering on the street. We also have summer camps that are coming up. Senior age, well, let's see, ages 13 through 20, if that's you, if you're in between those ages, um, for real, don't feel like it, but you really are. Uh, please see us, or you can go to this website and register and be able to go to camp. It's awesome. So many children get the Holy Ghost at camp and get ministered to. Camp has been around a long time, and it's always a blessing for the, the children and the young people. We want to recognize some birthdays. Sister Marcia had a birthday on Tuesday the 8th. Happy birthday, Sister Marcia. We know you're watching. Uh, Joshua Markham has a birthday this coming week on the 17th. So if you have his number, he loves to receive text messages. It brightens his day. Also, Sabine, her birthday is on the 18th of this week. And also, Sister Olive on the 20th. We want to remember to wish her a happy birthday as well. Let's stand together getting ready to bring our tithe and offering to the Lord as we pledge ourselves to be givers unto the Lord in Jesus' name. If we could have that on the screen, please, so that everyone may follow along in Jesus' name. Upon the authority and by the orders of your word, I have given, and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither and giver, and I bring my tithe and offerings today into your storehouse. 
Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates, returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts dismissed, royalties received. My greatest desire is that my whole family will be saved, walking with God in perfect health and abundance, and walking in divine favor and blessings. I shall be blessed going in, I shall be blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. It is so. Please bring your tithe and offering to the Lord. There is nothing impossible for him. unto the Lord if you believe all things are possible with God clap your hands all ye people hallelujah glory to God amen 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 as we've already talked about just because it doesn't happen today doesn't mean it's not going to happen you got to keep serving keep trusting God keep believing in God amen there's going to be days where you're going to be like Elijah and fires coming down and miracles and signs and wonders is going to happen and there's going to be days where you feel like hiding and just feel like you're all alone and by yourself and you almost want to die 
Amen. But we know that there's a God who can do all things. All things. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Good to have everyone in the house today. Good to have everyone watching today. Amen. I have a message today. Some of you are going to be surprised, but we are going to announce a big announcement today and uh, at the end of this message. Uh, the title of the message today is Invite People to Fellowship. Right. Invite People to Fellowship. Next Sunday, the 20th of this month, the 20th of June, is Back to Church Sunday. But it's also Father's Day. So since it's Father's Day, that's going to make it a lot easier to invite people to church because it's Father's Day. Now, what I would encourage everyone to do is invite your fathers or anybody that you know that is a father to church for Father's Day service, but it's also back to church service, but we're going to be celebrating fathers. Amen. So invite them to come in fellowship. And if you know a father, you have a father, or you just want to invite a father, and fathers are very important. They're very important, and they're very important to the kingdom of God. They're very important to our community, and we need to celebrate them. So invite them to church, and then you, the church is not going to be able to do this. We haven't prepared for this, but you should take that father out to lunch after service or out to dinner after service. Say amen. Amen. Invite them to fellowship with you. Come to church, and I'll take you out to eat. Hallelujah. And celebrate that you are a father because you are so very important, and you are appreciated, and we need to recognize our fathers both in the church, outside the church, in our communities. Amen? Amen. Amen. So next Sunday, Father's Day, it's also Back to Church Day. And, and I will be announcing, I might as well go ahead and announce it because I can't wait. We're going to start revival Amen. next Sunday. Amen. Father's Day. We're not going to have service on Sunday night because it's Father's Day. We want to celebrate our fathers. But Monday night, we are starting a old-fashioned revival. Yes, that means we have to come to church on Monday night at 730. And we're going to sing a song and we're going to worship. And then Brother Anthony is going to come and preach a message about healing and deliverance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then Tuesday night, the 22nd, Brother James is going to come and preach about repentance. And it's again 730 Tuesday night. You have to invite people to revival. You have to invite them before they can hear the word of God. And so invite people. And then Wednesday night, Brother Mike's going to prophesy over all of us. Whatever the Lord shows him, he's going to prophesy in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then we're going to take a few days off, and we're going to come back Sunday morning. And Brother Miguel, our youth pastor, is going to have a youth rally. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And then Sunday night, my wife is going to have a ladies' conference prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Slash teaching. Hallelujah. So she's got advance notice. she got two weeks. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, and then Wednesday night, Brother Trelvis is going to bless us with a full Bible study. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So, we need to be revived before we can revive anybody else. So, we got to get back to revival. We got to get back to church. And we got to start renewing ourselves. And we got to start inviting people to church. Say amen. 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 Glory to God. Good to have our sister back with us this Sunday. She was here last Sunday. Dorothy invited her. Good to have her. Devante, good to have you and, and your mother in the house of the Lord once again. Amen. Because we are going to get back to revival. We're going to get back to having church the way God wants us to have church. Plus, we're going to add some other events as we go along. So get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. We're going to celebrate Father's Day next Sunday morning. 
So how do we get people to come to church? How do we get people to fellowship? It is not just about coming to church. It's about having them come to fellowship, whether it's a prayer meeting, whether it's dinner, whether it's just having them over for a Bible study, or if it's just to come over to pray with them or, or whatever. we got to invite people before they can receive anything from God. The first thing that I want you to know today, and the most important thing that we've got to do, is we've got to invite them. They're not going to come if you don't invite them. Sister, would you have come to this church if somebody did not invite you? No, she wouldn't even know that it was here. Hallelujah. Now, I will say location, location, location is important. But guess what? Even in a location, if somebody doesn't invite them to the church, they're not going to come to church. When we was in West Palm Beach, we were on a busy street. People drove by it all the time. But when I was in charge of Bible studies... Every time I met somebody and I gave them a Bible study, I asked the question, how did you find us? Did you drive by? They're like, no, somebody invited me. So it wasn't just the location. It was the fact that somebody invited them. You can drive by a building all you want. doesn't mean you're going to stop and check it out. But when somebody invites you, then you can say, oh, I remember that building. I went by it one day. So in invitation is how you get people to come to church i saw a church sign one day on the on this church sign instead of where it said pastor in the name of the pastor it said ministers every member is a minister hallelujah it listen it's not just the pastor that's going to save souls as a matter of fact i looked up Resources and the stats say that only the pastor is actually only really responsible for about 6% of the people. Advertisement is only about 2% of the people, if you advertise. Hallelujah. Programs and events is only 6%. So you can organize an event and it doesn't mean that people are going to necessarily come to church. But 86%, everybody say 86%, 80 percent of the people said that they came to church because somebody invited them to church. So it's not the pastor, it's not the advertising, it's not the building, it's not the organized events that we have, it's you inviting somebody to come to church. Now, I have to say, I I am guilty of this. And I do know the building matters. I do know the pastor matters. I do know the preaching matters. I do know the music matters. I do know the AC matters. I do know that having events matters. Because I'm guilty. I'm 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 just going to tell you right now. I invited some people to church. And as soon as I invited them to church, I was going, I hope they don't show up. Why? Because I was embarrassed of the building. I'm just being honest. I wish I could do more with the building. Believe me, I would do more. So I invited people, and they're well-to-do. And so I'm thinking, man, I hope they don't show up to our church building. And I had to repent. But I get it. The pastor matters. The building matters. 
That's why we should do everything that we can with what we got to make sure that it is appropriate and it is inviting when somebody does come because we know the most important thing is not really the building. We know the most important thing is not necessarily the pastor or the music. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God and preaching the truth of God. That's the most important thing. But if they are not invited, they're not going to feel it. They're not going to hear it. They're not going to be delivered. They're not going to be touched. They're not going to be healed. They're not going to be witnessed to. They're not going to get anything. If they're not here, they're not going to receive it. And I will tell you, and I know because I have done it myself, and I know that some of you don't want to invite your family and your friends and co-workers because you're embarrassed about something. And you have made a decision for them that they're not going to come, or if they do come, they're not going to receive the word. They're not going to receive the spirit. They're going to, be, you're, they're going to embarrass you. We've already made the decision for them by not inviting them. I don't know what that preacher's going to say. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to do. So, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to invite anybody. I like him, but I'm not sure if anybody else will. Hallelujah. <laughs> say amen. Amen. It is important. Everybody say it is important. It's important to understand that Jesus has assigned each one of us, every one of us, the task of carrying out the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and preach and teach and invite. Matthew 28, 18 says it this way. And Jesus came and spake unto them, or spoken to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And we know what the name of the Father is. Hallelujah. And we know what the name of the Son is. And we know what the name of the Holy Ghost is. Because Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Ghost in my name. So what is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Son? What is the name of the Holy Ghost? It's Jesus, Jehovah, who became our salvation. God himself wrapped himself in the flesh and died for us. So go baptize them in the name of Jesus. And if you ever have any question about that scripture, go to the book of Acts, the action of the apostles, and see how they baptized. It was always in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, because that is the name that was commanded to baptize in. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever you have commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Brother Anthony, Sister Leanne, the Lord is with us all the way to the end. No matter what the dream is, no matter where you're at in the particular time in your life hold on to the dream he was never leaving you he has never forsaken you and one day you're going to be doing the same thing that you do every day and you're going to wake up and God's going to fulfill the dream can't just sit back and wait for it got to serve God well, what do I do until then just keep serving serve whoever it is that God puts in your life to serve Well, but I don't like the. It doesn't matter what you like. It doesn't matter if you like them. It doesn't matter if you agree with them. It doesn't matter anything. What matters is you serve wherever you're at, doing whatever it is that you can do for the kingdom of God. Until God says, now it's your time. When we come to understand this, when we come to understand that our duty, everybody say, it's my duty. It's not the pastor's duty. It's my duty. Well, you got quiet on me there. 
when we come and understand that it's our duty, we need to begin to ask the question, what can I do? Maybe you feel the responsibility to help people come to know Christ, and that's a wonderful thing, but they're not going to come to know Christ unless you invite them to fellowship. It may not start in church. Sister Dorothy, when you invited your friend, I bet you knew her before. Or did you just meet her at the store and say, hey, come to church? There was some fellowship going on. There was some fellowship going on. You have connections. You have family. You have co-workers. You have neighbors. You have, listen, you have people that you know from different ways of life. And listen, they're all candidates for you to invite. There's a wonderful thing in fellowship that exists in all the believers in the local church. However, we may want to ask this question. We need to, listen, we need to say revive us. Revive us. Revive, listen, renew my mind. Get me in the right spirit. Some of you might say, I'm not qualified. Yes, you are. If God called you and if you responded into repentance and you were baptized, calling on his name, he filled you with his spirit. He called you to be qualified to invite people to come and experience what you have. We taught last week. I can't remember if it was Sunday or Wednesday or when it was, but we understand that God wants us to be devoted, and God does not call us just to come and sit. He calls us to come and invite. He calls us to come and believe. He, call, he calls us to help and share, 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 participate in His work. I want to encourage everybody. I want to challenge everybody. It's not too difficult to ask somebody to have fellowship with you. You can just ask them out to eat. You can just ask them to come over for all you great cooks and all you like to bake and all you that like to have people in your home. That, that is a perfect ministry for you. And then you can invite them to come to church. It has been said that the number one reason people don't go to church is because no one ever asked them. All they can say is no. All they can say is yes and not show up. Anybody ever have that happen? Yes. Means no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes their no means yes. But one thing is sure, they're not going to show up, they're not going to hear, they're not going to hear the word, they're not going to hear the uplifting music, they're not going to hear the worship, they're not going to hear people praying, they're not going to feel the presence of God, they're not going to see how faithful and kind you are and how loving you are, they're not going to get prayed for because nobody knows who they are, because they've never showed up, because nobody ever invited them. We've already made a decision they're not going to receive, so I'm not going to invite them. I'm guilty. Why would I invite this person? There's no way they'll ever come to church. There's no way they'll ever receive if they do show up. It is very important that we invite people to church or to fellowship. It is a simple task that God has given us. We need to what? We need to ask the question to all of our family members. We need to ask the question to all of our neighbors. We need to ask the question to all of our co-workers. We need to ask the question to people we run into. Maybe we go to the bank. We can ask the teller, would you come to church with me? We're having a Come back to church service next Sunday. We're having a Father's Day service next Sunday. Will you come? Will you bring your father? Somebody say amen. amen. We all know more people than we think we do. Amen. I don't know anybody. How many of you use that 
that excuse. Uh, you know, I, I just, I, I really don't, I really don't. I'm not asking you if you know everything about their life. How many of you know you know somebody even if you don't know anything about them? Amen. Well, True. poke your neighbor and say, just start inviting. We all know somebody. And if you don't know anybody, maybe you ought to get out of your closet and go meet somebody. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we don't have to be super outgoing people to invite people to church. If you want, you can send them a card. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I don't like looking at people to people i don't i don't like uh, i don't want to be rejected well send them a card then hey can i get your address i want to send you something send them an invitation to church the number one reason people don't come to church because nobody invited them 86 percent of the people that come to church say it's because somebody invited them a family member a friend a co-worker a neighbor or someone they ran into during the day invited them so they decided to come and when they came they received and god changed their life that's how they ended up in church i was telling the story wednesday night when i was 23 years old I met this 77-year-old uh, black man in Chicago. He was a boxer. Man, this dude, brother, he wasn't very big. But his hands, man, they were like, they were like sledgehammers. He had huge knuckles and huge hands. And he had, a, he had a kind of a big head and he had a strong jaw. And I said, I, yeah, I can see him being a boxer. Man, I don't want him to hit me at 77 and I'm 23. He'd knock me out. But this man... He was a gambler, he was a boxer, and then at the age of 50, he had a heart attack because he loved peanut butter, and he would just eat peanut butter, and it clogged up his arteries, and he had a heart attack, and then he met the Lord, and then he was devoted to the Lord, and then he changed his diet. And he became very healthy. And at age 77, Brother Bobby, he was still working. He had his own business cleaning. He had a janitorial uh, business. At night, he would go clean biz uh, uh, business buildings. And, and he would work and work. And then he would come and he would visit. And I did not realize just till the other day that he sold a seed in my life. That today, I still remember things that he taught me many years ago and he doesn't know that i ended up in church but he tried to get me to go to church and so but he invited he invited he invited and you listen don't get discouraged if they don't come to your church. Don't get discouraged if they don't come and get saved under your pastor. Listen, somewhere, somehow, down the line, they may go to church and God may have a plan for them and they may get saved. Amen. Say amen, somebody. We got to preach the word. We can't determine who receives it. But I know one thing for sure. Nobody's going to receive it if you never invite them. We all know people besides the people that are in the building that we can invite. Everybody say our family. Our family. Let's look at the book of Acts, chapter 10. We see a man, Cornelius, who was God-fearing, and he prayed daily, and he gave alms. He gave money to the needy, and he was praying one day, and God showed up. And then verse 24 says, And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and he called together his kinsmen and his near friends. He called together his kinsmen and his near friends. In other words, he started inviting people to come. In verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. <laughs> and they all repented. They all got baptized in Jesus' name. They all got filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were, what? They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. 
But guess what? Most people would have thought they're not going to receive it. But Cornelius gathered them together. Who did he gather together? Family and friends. When they believed, they were astonished at what Peter had said. And because of that, the Gentiles also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these, that these people should not be, what, baptized? And when they were baptized, they received the gift of the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they prayed. Hallelujah. They prayed with them and tarried a certain amount of days. Who did he invite? His near kinsmen. That means his family, his brothers, his sisters, his uncles, his grandfathers, his aunts and uncles and neighbors and friends. And he invited people to come. He did not listen. It was not up to him whether they received it or not but it was up to him to invite them. We have to believe the word of God that it's going to, it's going to penetrate the hearts. We get discouraged because they come to church one time, they hear the word, and they, you know, they, they leave, and they, you know, they appear, it appears that they have not received anything. But we don't know what they have received. We don't know what's going to happen later in their life. It may not be in your church. It may be in another church. But someone has to sow the seed. They may not like the building. They may not like the temperature of the building. They may not like the sound of the noise of the music. They may not like the way we look. They may not like the preacher or the preaching of the word. But it doesn't mean God's not doing something in their life doesn't mean God's not sowing a seed in their life. Maybe they would receive the word. Maybe they just want to be in a different atmosphere or a different location. Don't get discouraged. We, we put too much on us. We put way too much on us. We think that we got to invite them. We think we have to pray them through. We think that we are responsible for everything that goes on in their life. We are responsible to tell them how to live. We're responsible for their sin. All you're responsible to do is invite 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 says, For I delivered unto you first of all, which I have also received. If you receive from God, it's your job to share how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. It's not what the preacher says, it's what the scripture says. I need a mic. There we go. That one's dying on me. It's the Word of God. It's the Scriptures that matter. He so loved the world that He died, that He sacrificed His life. He, he allowed Himself to be hung on the cross. They buried Him. He rose from the dead, and He chose the apostles and filled them with the Holy Ghost and told them what to preach and what, listen, and what did they do? They obeyed and they preached the gospel. Did everybody that heard, listen, did everybody they preached to that heard the word, did they all receive it? No. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received. If you received, it's your job to share how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried and that He rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. He invited relatives and close friends. Now I want you to look at this one more time. Researchers say when they ask new converts, what was the major influence in your leading to Christ and to the church? They responded 2% from church advertisement. 6% because I know the pastor or I have a relationship with the pastor. Two, I'm sorry, 6% of an organized evangelism program. And friends, relatives, 
family, neighbors, co-workers, 86%. Location matters, yes. The preacher matters, yes. Our kindness matters, yes. Our cleanliness matters, yes. Our events matter, yes. Do we have programs that matters, yes. Do we offer this? Do we offer that? Yes, it all matters. But the number one reason people are going to receive and get connected to the church is because somebody invited them. All of us, and all that this proves is that we all have family members, and we all have friends, and we have a group of people that we can influence if we would invite them to come and hear the gospel preached. And when they hear the gospel preached, it can change their lives forever. Well, listen, did God change your life through the preaching of the word? I wish I had somebody here that would shout hallelujah. It was the preaching of the word that got me to change my life and start living for Christ. It wasn't the building. It wasn't the advertisement. It wasn't the program. It was because somebody invited me and I heard the word and it pricked my heart. It convicted my heart and I felt the presence of God and I gave my life to God and I obeyed the scriptures and I got baptized in Jesus' name and he filled me with his spirit. But they will never experience that if we don't invite them. If we don't invite them, they will never have the opportunity. I didn't say they would all receive it, but if they're not invited, when we go overseas and we have 25, 30,000 people in the gymnasium and only 3,000 receive the Holy Ghost, that means 27,000 either already had the Holy Ghost or somebody else they need the Holy Ghost. Do we leave the conference do we leave the Philippines, Sister Marianne, and go, God, what an awful service. 27,000 people didn't pray in tongues. No, the only thing we remember is 3,000 people received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. We, we saw people delivered. We saw people uh, be healed. We saw miracles, signs, and wonders. And not everybody got a miracle. Not everybody received what they needed. Are y'all getting quiet on me? We come to church and, and we, 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 instead of looking at the positive, we always look at the negative. Man, 99% of us didn't get anything out of service today. But guess what? The only one that really matters is that 1% that did receive something from the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But they would have never received it if somebody didn't invite them to church. Let's take a look at this. Our family is the most difficult people sometimes to witness to. <laughs> oh, Jesus said, I could not do much in my own land because everybody knew me as little baby Jesus or little kid Jesus, and, and nobody wanted to receive their miracle. Hallelujah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? When I go overseas, I was telling Brother Anthony yesterday, when I go overseas and God does these miraculous things and, and God allows me to be used by him and these awesome services, and then I get on the plane, I'm like, oh, i got to go back home. i got to go back and be a pastor where nobody believes that, I, that God can use me to heal them or God can't use me to do a miracle in their life or God doesn't, they don't believe that God's going to use me as an evangelist or a prophet or, a, or, or an apostle. It's just pastor. Not much can be do, done in your own land for some reason. I don't know why that is. I was telling Brother Anthony, I hope my wife doesn't get offended, but she used to sit in the Bible studies, and she would hear the Bible studies over and over and over and over and over, and she could quote the next scripture that I was going to use. She had it memorized, and, and over and over. And she would already be at the page before I got there, and she would be quoting it under her breath. So I thought, she's got revelation. Sister, she didn't have revelation. She knew what I was going to preach, but she had no clue what I was saying. And then one day, 
some evangelist shows up. And he says the exact same thing that I have been saying a thousand times. And she goes, oh. I'm like, you didn't know that? Her mom and dad, they both are like fourth generation apostolic Pentecostal children. And they were in Bible college when they met. They were married for a year or two years. I think it was the second year of Bible college. He was in the restroom, and all of a sudden he goes, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God. I, this is amazing. This is unbelievable. I can't believe I never saw this. And she goes, What? There's only one God. She's like, You're at the Apostolic Bible College, and you don't know that there's one God? You're fourth generation Pentecost. You don't know that there's one God. It was just like all of a sudden it hit him, and he all of a sudden seen it, and she was surprised that he didn't know that. But that's, that's kind of like our life, right? It's like evangelists can come and say something, and it's like everybody's like, wow. That's awesome. Oh, my God, I've never seen that. I've never heard that before. Well, the pastor's only been preaching 20 years on it. So I'm just kind of getting all the rocks and all the weeds and tilling the ground, kind of getting ready for some good seed to come. Say amen. But the, the, the point, folks, is we don't know. We don't know, hallelujah, if they're going to receive it, if we don't invite them, if we don't spend time getting rid of some rocks and, and, and getting them prepared so when they do come to church, they can receive it. You know what I think, a brother, brother, I think a big mistake that we make a lot of times when we do invite somebody to church, we don't tell them what it's going to be like. We don't tell them about the building. We, we don't give them a heads up. We don't tell them, Brother Mario, that the music there is loud. <laughs> and, and it's either hot or cold there. There is no in-between. You're either hot or you're cold. Half the building, people are sweating to death, and half the building, they're all in blankets and covers and jackets and gloves and head uh, head head headgear covering their ears we don't tell them that the preacher might act crazy we we might listen we don't warn them that he might get a little excited and he might jump on things or he might stomp around he might spit he, 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 it looks like he might be having a heart attack so when it happens they're like the people are like oh my god what's wrong with this guy He's having a fit. You know, before you invite people to church, you might like kind of give them a little heads up about like how everything operates. <laughs> so that they're not like in shock when they get here. They, they, they look at the building. Brother Anthony came. Somebody told him about the church and they gave him the address. And, and the only thing that saved us with Brother Anthony is that God showed him in the dream what the building looked like. But a lot of people come and they're looking they're like, this is a church? <laughs> you know, when you invite somebody, you need to kind of like tell them what to expect. Somebody might come over and lay hands on you. You know, if you invite somebody to church and they don't know that we lay hands on them and, and we're shaking them and we're, we're, we're beating on them and, and we're spitting on them and we're saying, Hallelujah, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, cast out this devil in Jesus' name. Oh, they, that might offend them. They might get, like, spooked. So invite people but kind of give them a warning. Say Amen. amen. <laughs> 
We need to persuade people to come to church. They cannot hear the gospel if we do not. Hey, if we don't invite them, we've already made a decision that they're not going to receive it. Allow me to share another example. Can I share another example? I'm not going to get through all this, Sister Pat. I told you I had too many scriptures. So I'm going to have to share this later. But look at, look, look at, look at Acts chapter 16, verse 31, 32, and 33. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. They're, listen, sister, they're talking about a gentleman who has got the charge to watch over the apostles. They've been put in prison, and the jailer who was watching them, in those days, he gets the charge. In other words, if they escape, uh, he's going to be put to death. And so... When the wall started shaking, they began to praise God at midnight, and the, 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 the earth began to shake, and the jail doors flew open. He came, and he was about ready to kill himself because he didn't want to get that charge. And, and so they said, wait, don't harm thyself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They said, listen, if you want to be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and your whole house will be saved. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. How many of you would, listen, listen, how many of you would agree that this church really stays kind of in the word for the most part? I don't know what I would preach if I didn't have the scriptures. They spoke the word of the Lord to all that were in the house. That means everybody that was there heard the word. And he took them the same hour and washed their stripes, and they were baptized. Folks, if they're not in the same house, chances are, now God can do anything, and God can touch anybody anywhere, but for some reason God has chosen the church, the body, the assembly, of believers together who come together and have faith and pray and worship and believe and hear the word he has chosen the foolishness of a preacher he has chosen the foolishness of the preaching of the word to be the most potent the most anointed the most powerful tool that we have for people to receive christ So they re he received it, him and the whole house. They went down immediately and got baptized, and they were baptized in Jesus' name. But guess what? Zero percent would happen. Zero percent of the Word or the Spirit can move if we don't invite them to the church, if we don't invite them to a Bible study, if we don't invite them for fellowship, if we don't invite them for us to pray with them. If we don't invite them, it's about it's almost 0% that they're going to receive anything. There was a man who said the Christian home is by far the most powerful evangelizing agency in the world. By their gracious influence, the Christian homes win more converts than all the preachers put together. In other words, the beginning of the church the first original church, they went home to home to home. People came over. They broke bread together. They prayed together. They fellowshiped together. They shared a little word together. And guess what? More people will be saved if we will invite people to fellowship than the preacher can do. Preacher, I mean, we're, I mean at best we're at 6%. I want to encourage everybody. Look at your neighbor and say, he's encouraging all of us. To begin thinking about individuals who we know in our family, our neighbors, our friends, our coworkers, people that we associate with every day in some form or fashion. If they're not attending a church, 
We need to ask them to come to Father's Day service next Sunday. We need to ask them to come to our back to church service on Sunday. And revival starts Sunday morning with the Father's Day service. And then Monday night, we're going to have a healing and deliverance service. And then Tuesday night, we're going to have a message on repentance. And then we're going to have prophecy on Wednesday night. And then next Sunday morning, we're going to have our youth pastor. He's going to have a youth rally for our children. Bring your children to church. If you want your children to hear the Word of God, bring them to church. And we need to invite people. And then Sunday night, it's going to be a ladies' conference. And my wife is going to speak to the ladies of the church and then next when and then the following Wednesday night is going to be brother Travis giving us a Bible study in Jesus name now I'm going to stop here today I'm not even close to being finished because we still have friends we still have neighbors we still have co-workers we got all these other people that we're going to talk about according to the scriptures but I want brother Mike brother Travis if you will pass out the schedule. This is just a quick copy of our schedule service. I want everybody to get a copy. I'm challenging. I'm encouraging. I'm inviting everybody to invite somebody to come to our service. If you are not ready for them to come to the service, why don't you invite them out for dinner, breakfast, or lunch? Or just have them come over and fellowship with you over a cup of coffee or some tea, whatever it is, a piece of cake, a piece of pie, chocolate cake. Sister Edna and Brother Mike are taking orders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can't bake a cake and you want to invite somebody for some coffee and cake, tell Sister Edna and she'll charge you a, a, a nice uh, ransom and she'll cook it for you and Brother Mike will put icing on for you and they will deliver it to you and you can share the gospel over a piece of cake. But I want to get, folks, I want to close in a serious matter. I, I would like for everybody to just come to the altar. Everybody come to the altar. No excuses. Just everybody come to the altar. Let's just unite as one. We want to pray for revival. We want to pray for renewal. We want to pray for unity. We want to pray uh, for a spirit of boldness. And it doesn't really don't have to be that bold to invite people. Be bold enough to come to the front. If you have children, just grab them. Take them in your arms. Hold their hand. It's time to be revived. It's time to be renewed. It's time to be delivered. It's time to be set free. It's time to be encouraged once again. We have went through a dry season. We went through a season where the dream was fading away, and this looks nothing like the dream that you gave us. This looks like nothing like the vision that you showed us that the church was going to be. But we're going to keep serving. We're going to keep inviting. We're going to keep preaching. We're going to keep getting up and doing what God wants us to do until the day where our hope is fulfilled, where our hope is fulfilled, where God fills the void of the hope. Hallelujah. We wake up and we start our day and we do whatever God wants us to do, whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. We're going to be submitted to God and His authority, and we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. We're just going to preach the Word. We need more Bible studies. I want to preach. I want to teach. I want people to hear about the apostolic doctrine. I want people to know that there is a God who can forgive you of your sins, who can wash your sins away, who can heal your body, who can cast out devils, who can change your life, who can give you a new life. He can put on His Spirit inside of you, and He can change everything. He can give you hope where there is no hope. He can take away your addictions. He can change your attitude. He can change your fellowship. He can change your partnership. He can change your life and bless you. He can 
He can get rid of the old man, the old woman, and he can renew and he can, he can give you a new life. He can use you to lay hands on the sick and the sick be recovered. He can use you to lay hands on those that are possessed with either a devil spirit or a human spirit. And you can set them free. And they can be filled with His spirit. And they can walk in the newness of life. They can become separate and holy. And they, they, they are part of the world, but they don't have to be, I mean, they're in the world, but they don't have to be part of the world. We can walk in lightness, in the light and not in darkness. We believe that there's a God who can direct us in our relationships. We believe that there's a God who can forgive us of our sins. There's a God. Who cares about our community. Who cares about our families. Who cares about our neighbors. Who cares about those that we run into on a daily basis. You know, there's a song, and I know we probably don't sing it, but there's a song that says, Lord, why don't you send, send somebody? And the Lord says, I have. I've sent you. You're my hands. You're my feet. You're my head. Listen, you're my ears. You're my head. You're my mouth. I have chosen you as a vessel of honor. I have chosen you. I have called you out from, from darkness. I have called you out from the dry desert land. I have called you into my glorious, marvelous light. And I have chosen you to be my mouth. I have chosen you to be my witness. The Word of God says that the apostles, when they were chosen, they were chosen by the Holy Ghost. And when they were chosen by the Holy Ghost, that means they had to have the Holy Ghost, right? Right? God filled them with the Holy Ghost. They all were filled with the Holy Ghost. They had the revelation of repentance. They had the revelation of being baptized, calling on His name. They had the revelation of changing their life. They can't continue to live the life of sin. But when they do sin, mercy and grace is there. And His love and His kindness. Listen, we, we, we have to understand that when God changes our life, we have to share it. And, and, and in sharing it, people ought to see peace. People ought to see love and kindness. People ought to see that you're long-suffering. People ought to see that you're not angry and you don't cuss people out. God, God, God fills us with His Spirit and we ought to produce some, some fruit of joy, forgiveness, gentleness, but we also got to be bold in the Holy Ghost. Being bold doesn't mean we cuss people out and tell them they're going to go to hell. Boldness means that we have the boldness to share the good news. We have the boldness to invite them to a, a church building that doesn't look like a church building. We have the boldness to invite them to a church service where church service is a little different than most church services. Where the Spirit of God moves. <laughs> Woo! What's going on? What's wrong? He's possessed. Yes, he's possessed of the Holy Ghost. Hey! He It's called the anointing of God. And when he Woo! You can feel the power and the anointing of the Spirit of the living, true living God. Woo! He called a shah. He called a mosata. He called a mosata. Jalen, Jalen, and Devante. Jalen and Devante. I want you guys to come up here. You're part of the church. You're part of us. Come on up. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. Hey. Brother Miguel, hallelujah. Brother Mike, Brother Anthony, I want you to come over. I want you to pray. Hallelujah. Don't be shy. Come on. Hallelujah. God cares about you. God cares about you. 
God wants you to feel the anointing. God wants you to feel the power. God wants you to feel what it's all about. There's an anointing. There's a spirit that you can receive that will change your life. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, there is a God who will never forget your vision or your dream. Oh, whatever you're going through. Hey, God is not done with you yet. He had given you a dream, a vision. God is not done yet. He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. God's going to do it again. He's going to heal again. He's going to deliver. He's going to set free. He's going to change us. He's going to change us again and again and again. God is going to bless us. God is going to bless our work. God is going to bless us. God is going to fulfill his dream. God is going to fulfill his word and his vision in Jesus' name. God is going to bless and anoint our businesses. He's going to bless and anoint our homes and our children. God's going to increase your ministry. You're all ministers of the gospel of Christ. You are a living epistle for all men and all women and all children to read. You are a light in the dark world. You are an example of God's word living daily. Jesus can heal in the local church just as much as he can overseas. I need to say this again, folks. The same God that does miracles, signs, and wonders overseas is the same God in the local church. We seem to have a hard time with that one. The same God, the same anointing. Yes, I know the gifts of the Spirit operate differently. He uses a pastor for pastoral role. But he can also be used as an evangelist, a prophet, a healer, a miracle worker. Because it's really in the God, not the person. If our faith and expectation is in the house, God can do for you what he has done for many others. Jesus. You need a miracle right now. I want you to lift up your hands and I want you to say, I receive it in the mighty name of Jesus, my healer. What about the spoken word, the authority of the spoken word. If God can speak resurrection by the word, we can speak healing by the word. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not all by yourself. The gift that God has given you, He's going to begin to use it. I'm inviting my friends. I'm inviting my neighbors. I'm inviting my co workers. I'm inviting those that I come in contact with. 
Jesus, Jesus. I'll invite them to dinner. I invite them to breakfast. I'll invite them to lunch. I invite them to my home. I invite them for a Bible study. I invite them to watch the Bible studies on a memory stick. I will invite them to go to YouTube. I will invite them to go to Facebook. Ha! Huh. Somebody's watching. Somebody's watching that needs a miracle, that needs a healing, that needs deliverance. In Jesus' name. Hey! By your faith, you are made full. Somebody watching right now, lift up your hands. I want you to feel the anointing. I want you to feel the power of God. His spirit is omnipresent. He is all present. He's touching you right now. Somebody's receiving the Holy Ghost. Somebody's being renewed in their spirit. Somebody's being renewed in their mind and their heart. Somebody's being renewed in their legs. Somebody's being renewed in their back. Somebody's being renewed in their hearing. Some of you, somebody's being healed of your hearing, both physically and spiritually. Jesus. Somebody's being renewed and healed in their spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, Lord, do you believe that you are able to do this? Yes, we do. We believe you are able to do this. Hallelujah. By your faith, you are made whole. By your faith, you are healed. In Jesus' precious name. We take a step of faith. We take a step of faith. We confirm. We confirm his word. Yeah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Riatara Mama Mondo, your Robo Koshata, Ila la la Bokosha, Ila la 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 Macondo, your Robo Shai, Ila la 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 Bacataye, Ila Mamodo, your Robo Shataye, Iko Robo Sata, Jesus, Jesus, Eha, Iko Romo Mobo Shai, Eha. Jesus. Some of you receive what you needed today. Some of you just got a little seed. There is the miracles where God instantly does something. Healing is a progression. It's a process in which God speeds up the process. And it may take a little longer, but it's healing. That's healing. If something in the natural would take 12 weeks to heal, God can speed that process up to eight, six, four, or even two weeks or a week even. But if he wants to do a miracle, he'll do it right at that moment. There is no process to it. Some of us, we receive the seed. We may never see you again. We may never hear from you again. But somewhere in your life, God has put a seed, and that's going to begin to flourish. That's going to begin to produce. You may get called somewhere else. You may get uh, moved somewhere else because of whatever happens in your life. But, but you'll remember the word. And you may not remember it for a long time afterwards. After God's already changed everything, so, oh, I remember way back when when I heard that word. And we don't need credit for anything because all credit goes to God. Hallelujah. 
All I want to do is be a servant of the Most High God. I just want to be a servant of the God who does all things when it's His will. And all I can do is preach about it. All I can do is be available. All I can do is get up and serve one more day. Sometimes my serving might be labor. Sometimes my serving might be giving. Sometimes my service might be preaching the word, teaching the word, counseling the word. Whatever it is, I'm here as a vessel, as a servant of the Most High God. And his name is Jesus, which means Jehovah, who became our salvation, the anointed Messiah who died and shed his blood for you and I so that we can receive healing, that we can receive salvation. And he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And then he came back and filled us with his spirit. I believe in that God. I invite you to invite people so that they can hear the word of God. God bless you. We love you. We're so thankful for each and every one of you, everything that you do. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for holding on to another day to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your giving. And no matter what way that you give, whether it's through prayer, encouragement, or it's in tithe and offering, however it is that you give, however you are a blessing, we are so thankful for each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. And we start revival next Sunday, Father's Day service, back to church, Monday night healing, Tuesday night repentance, Repentance. Wednesday night, prophecy. Next Sunday, youth rally. Next Sunday night, ladies conference. And then the following Wednesday, Bible study with Brother Travis. God bless you. We love you. Amen. God bless you. Want you worship the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.